Hi everyone, my name is Candice Reardon and I'm from City Hill Church. If you're listening to this, you've likely been affected by COVID-19 in some way. For those of us who've been diagnosed with COVID-19 or facing a period of isolation at home, we wanted to provide you with some helpful strategies that could really benefit your heart and your mind in this season. I've been working in the area of psychology for about 18 years now, helping people in, in this regard. And I must say, I've published numerous articles and book chapters in the field of psychological health. But when it comes to the Bible, there are some amazing strategies for how to achieve optimal mental and emotional health that we can find there. And today, I'd love to look at one short scripture with you from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. And the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the perfect will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I'll say that again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And we're going to briefly look at those three things now. Number one, rejoice always. Now we all probably agree that if we feel joyful, this will likely make us rejoice. But how many of you know that we don't only rejoice when we feel joyful, but we rejoice to become joyful? It's easy to rejoice when circumstances around us are wonderful and satisfying and happy. But what happens when a viral pandemic occurs? What happens when we're facing extreme lockdown regulations? You might ask yourself, how can God ask us to rejoice always when these are some of the circumstances that we face? I'd like to answer my own question and say that the key to being able to rejoice always is to rejoice in someone and not in something. If you're a Christian and you're watching this, then this someone is the Lord God. And I want to encourage you, if you're facing a COVID-19 diagnosis, if you're facing a period of isolation at home, make God the center and the inspiration for your praise. Rejoice in Him. Let Him be the focus of your celebration. I praise him for who he is to me. I celebrate him for the things that he's done within my life. And if we are able to keep him at the focus, at the center of our lives, then we realize that it is possible to rejoice always. When our praise and our celebration is grounded in the someone who is unchanging and not in what is going on in the world around us that is being shaken. Some people watching this might ask, what if I'm not a Christian? How do I rejoice then? Well, at, we rejoice as we give expression to any feeling of joy and happiness inside of us. So whether it comes out of our mouth through words or it's displayed in actions, this can include, rejoicing can include a lingering smile, laughter and a good chuckle. It can include a high five or an air five, a dance around the kitchen, or simply taking a few moments to praise someone for something that you value within them. R research has actually shown that smiling, even if it is not grounded in an authentic emotion, so like a fake smile, for example, even a fake smile can trick your brain and still improve your mood, lower your heart rates, and decrease your stress levels. For example, I might feel moderately chuffed inside when my six-year-old is able to tie his shoe laces on his own. But if I seize the moment and I walk over to him and I high-five him, I increase the intensity, the intensity of my own positive emotion as I express it and I feel more joyful. So rejoice always and you'll experience more joy. Secondly, that scripture says, pray without ceasing. If you're watching this and you're a Christian, then I'm sure you're aware that you have a loving Heavenly Father who wants you to talk to Him. And the amazing thing about prayer is that He wants it to be a two-way conversation. 
When we speak to him, we invite him into our circumstances. We can start to hear his voice speaking into the challenges that we face. And we start to receive the resources that we need from him to confront that challenge. One of those resources that we get through prayer is peace. Now, what is peace? Some people may ask. I want to assure you, peace is not the absence of chaos. Peace isn't the absence of turmoil or disorder around us. Peace is not that feeling that we get when we find ourselves in peaceful, idyllic, and tranquil, tranquil conditions. Peace is a person. Peace is an awareness of the presence of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Philippians 4, verse 5 to 7 in the Amplified Bible says, The Lord is near. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, that's every circumstance and situation, including COVID-19, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And then it says this, and the peace of God, that peace that reassures the heart, which transcends all understanding. That means the peace that goes beyond our mind's ability to comprehend, will stands God over our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So as we pray continually, as I talk to the Lord, as I'm doing the dishes, as I'm making dinner, as I'm walking around the house, what it does for me is it puts me in this frame of mind where I believe that the Lord is near. I'm talking to him. So it re reminds me of the fact that he is near, he is here, he is all around me in this moment. He holds my life and he's not going to abandon me. So when we pray without ceasing, we receive peace. Firstly, because, as I said, it puts us in the frame of mind where we believe that God is listening to us and he's with me right now. Secondly, we receive peace when we pray because asking Father God to intervene into our lives and inviting him to intervene, we start to see his hand at work. We start to see him helping us. And that produces peace and comfort in knowing that he is with us. If you're an unbeliever and you might find this idea of talking to God really strange, I'd really encourage you to give it a try. You never know what could happen. He is madly in love with you. He wants to be in a relationship with you. And so I'd really encourage you in these challenging times to start to pray to him. Secondly, if it's not speaking to the Lord, I'd encourage you, talk to someone. Pick up the phone and make contact with a, with a family member. Make contact with a friend. Talk to us at City Hill Church. You can send us a mail at hello at cityhill.co.za and we'll get someone to make contact with you to talk through what you're struggling with. But praying without ceasing, talking to someone, why am I advocating for these types of things? Well, when we communicate with someone about what's going on inside of us, when we start to be vulnerable and communicate about our loneliness or our fear or our anxiety, it requires our brains to find and assign the right words to what we're feeling inside of us. Not only this, but we need to string them together into a coherent and meaningful sentence. And this needs to come out of our mouths. And as it does, as we communicate and verbalize what's going on within us, whether it's to the Lord or to someone else, the problem comes out in word form. And we can start to see it in a more objective way. We gain perspective over it as we hold it in front of us in word form. And we start to see it from different perspectives and different angles. And this is one of the main reasons why therapy and counseling is often called the talking cure. Lastly, he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. The thing about giving thanks in all circumstances is it makes us feel gratitude, joy, and contentment. I love this quote by Anne Foscom. She, she says, everyone, if that's everyone, gets to decide how happy they want to be because everyone gets to decide how grateful they are willing to, to be. I'll say that again. Everyone gets to decide how happy they want to be 
because everyone gets to decide how grateful they are willing to be. Finding things to be grateful for in this season of COVID-19 and all its upheaval might be challenging, but I want to encourage you to try and count your blessings, to find them, because they are there. Because in essence, we decide how thankful we want to be, and that will influence how happy and joyful we become. But not only does giving thanks in all circumstances produce really positive emotions within us, but when we give thanks, it actually starts to change the perspective on our life. Some of us might recall those auto stereograms, and those were those 2D uh, patterned images. And if you recall, you used to focus on a point in those patterned 2D images. And as you focus on a point, then a 3D picture started to pop out of that 2D image that you never knew was actually there. Giving thanks in all circumstances is just like those pictures. As we count our blessings, as we are deliberate about finding things that we can be thankful for, then suddenly what starts to happen is the positives in our life start to move to the foreground. And maybe those negative things, those disappointments, discouragements, whatever they are, start to fade and move to the background. And suddenly we see that as we've given thanks, it starts to change the whole picture of our circumstances. You can't feel thankful and afraid at the same time. You cannot feel discouraged and grateful in the same moment. It is impossible. So placing yourself in a constant state of thankfulness leaves little room for negative emotions to grow and to fester. I'll say it again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. I'd love you to consider the wisdom embedded in this scripture and adopt it as a way of life in this in this time the reward for us will be joy peace gratitude and contentment optimal mental and emotional health bless you guys